Succulents are living, growing plants, so they do need sunlight in order to survive. In general, they like a lot of sunshine, but there are some varieties out there that can tolerate a little bit lower light. And I'm gonna give you some good guidelines so that you can make educated guesses on how much light your particular variety might need. But I'm also gonna show you what signs to look out for that your plant is showing you it's getting too much or too little light so that you can move it into a better spot. Let's get into it. Any succulent that you order from us from Mountain Crest Gardens is going to come with either one of these little name tags right in its pot, or if you ordered a wholesale bulk tray, it'll come with one of these ID legends. And once you have either of those, you're gonna know the name of your plant and you'll be able to look it up online on our catalog where we list for all of the over 1000 varieties that we sell, um, the recommended light conditions. And there's four different types of them. I'll get into what they actually mean but that's gonna give you an idea of where to place your succulent so that it's getting enough sunlight. Now, if you don't know the name of your plant, you can make some inferences um, based on its form and its color about how much light it needs. So any of your varieties that are super colorful, they might be showing pink, red, purple tones like this Echeveria, they're gonna want lots and lots of sunlight. It's honestly almost hard to give an Echeveria too much light if you're going to indoors. Um, they are very sun-loving plants. Another one is if it's very pale white or fuzzy like this Kalanchoe Fang, that's gonna be uh, needing a lot of sunlight. Additionally, things with really thick leaves or thick stems, so if you think of a cactus, that's got a massive chonky stem and it needs full direct sunlight. On the other side of things, what might need lower light are the less colorful things, things that are predominantly green, dark green, like this Gasteria here. Um, also Haworthia and jade plants, all of those really green varieties have a ton of chlorophyll. So you can keep them in slightly lower light indoors um, or partial sun outdoors and they'll still be happy. And then lower light can also be good for the thinner leaved varieties. Um, a lot of these are sort of the more questionable succulents or some of the hanging and trailing ones with really slender stems. They're also good varieties um, to use in your lower light locations. But what does lots of sun and lower light actually look like? Like where in your house does that, is that gonna be? So on Mountain Crest Garden's site, there are four different categories of recommended light conditions listed. First of all, we're gonna have low indoor light. So those are gonna be varieties like your Gasteria, your Jade Plants, Haworthia, that can be indoors. Um, they're totally fine to be in a room with a very sunny window, but they might not need to be right on the sill. Alternatively, if you don't have very sunny windows, um, these could be on the sill of a partial sun window, maybe one that gets um, pretty limited hours of sunlight. Maybe it gets shaded, maybe it's dappled light, things like that. Um, so those are gonna be your indoor varieties. And they, I like to think of them as they will tolerate lower light, but most succulents, you could give them a bit more light and they'll be happy, they'll thrive. But it's an important distinction because a lot of the places where we want to have succulents don't have enough light. So it's important to know what varieties might tolerate that better than others. The other indoor light condition that you'll find listed on our site is bright indoor light. So that's going to be things that really need to be right in a sunny windowsill. And for most people, um, that's going to be a south facing window if, you, if you're in the northern hemisphere. Um, so that's going to give you the most hours of sunlight per day and keeping it close is really important because the farther away from that window you move, the more the light um, is diffuse and the less that gets to your plant's leaves. And it's really important to remember too that light, um, sorry, windows filter out a lot of um, photosynthetically active radiation. Basically, it just means the light that the plant needs. And our eyes are adjusting for it. So you might not notice, you might think your, your room seems pretty well lit, but um, it's actually probably uh, filtering out a lot of the light that your plant needs. So that's why in general, you wanna keep your succulents closer to windows. Then we have two light conditions for outdoor succulents. The first is going to be filtered or partial sunlight. So these are ones that they can be outdoors, but they probably don't want a lot of full direct sun, especially in the afternoon when there's heat. 
So these will be great varieties to plant um, where they're getting dappled light or where they're getting afternoon shade. And then the fourth category is just full sun. And these are varieties like your agave, your cactus, even your Semper Vivum that um, are happy in full direct sun. And usually I give the general guideline with lots of caveats and asterisks that um, think about six hours minimum per day is a great place. Um, but those are all just guidelines of where to start. So now we're gonna look at how to know when to adjust that because your plant is gonna show you if it needs more or less light. One of the very most common struggles that I see people have with their succulents is that they're not getting enough sunlight. And when a plant isn't getting enough sun, it's called etiolation. And it's gonna respond in a number of ways. The first thing you'll start to see is it's gonna to fade to green and start going pale. So this is a normal, healthy Semper Vivum Cleveland Morgan that's been getting plenty of sunshine. And this is that same variety. So if you saw this alone, I think a lot of people wouldn't notice any issue with it. But if you're starting to look for it, you see that the, um, the leaves on this are starting to open really wide. And that's the plant opening up to try to absorb as much sunlight as it might be able to get. Um, additionally, it's lost some of the, the nice purpley tips on the leaves there and it's gone completely green um, because it needs as much chlorophyll as possible to try to photosynthesize and survive when it's not getting enough sun. So once you see a succulent at this point, um, that is uh, pretty easy to fix. You just need to move it into more light. But if, you, if something has gone even farther down the etiolation path, you're going to start to see it stretch tall. So it's reaching really up high, trying to get more and more light. And the key with that is that the stem, as it stretches, is going to show these big gaps between leaves. Um, because there are succulents that can grow tall stems, um, even when they're healthy and getting lots of sun, but they won't have those massive gaps between leaves uh, when they started out as a rosette. So what do you do if you see that? Um, well, this is gonna be hard to fix. This is never going to shrink down again. If you see a succulent that's just started to fade and go pale or open up its rosette really wide, then it, you're ready to gradually accl acclimate that into more sunlight. I usually recommend taking about one to two weeks to move it into brighter and brighter sun, um, but you'll see it respond and close those leaves back in. It'll definitely regain color um, and you'll be in the clear. Once things have started stretching, you might be in the territory of wanting to behead to take a cutting and reroute, which I'll leave resources for, because that is a whole propagation process. In the same way that if you noticed one of your succulents at home was doing this and you would want to gradually acclimate it into more sunlight, we also recommend you do that with any succulents you've ordered online, say from Mountain Crest Gardens, because those are shipping to you in a dark box and they also need time to gradually acclimate to more and more sunlight. Gently stressing your succulent by giving it more sun exposure is a great way to bring out vibrant pigments, but you can take it too far. So I'm gonna show you sort of what that process looks like as, as it becomes more extreme. Here's a Haworthia here that I would say is sun stressed, but is totally healthy, could recover, could live like this for a long time. It's been getting a lot of sun, so the green in the center is the color it would normally be. And then this more coppery, um, a little bit brown color on the outside, that's its stress color. Um, so this is my first sign to see, oh, um, this windowsill that I've had it in is pretty bright and um, I could leave it there if it's not looking too crispy or anything's dying back. But if I don't like the look of this and some people don't, I can move it elsewhere and that whole plant is gonna turn back to its normal green tone. If the stress goes too far, you're gonna to start to see leaves get crispy. This one here is a mangave um, that's been out getting tons and tons of summer sun. And so what was just kind of coloring up and turning nice purpley tones then became actual burns. And when a succulent gets a sunburn, it is permanent damage. That leaf is never gonna recover. It's just gonna have to grow out of that as it grows new leaves from the center and sheds these, these outer lower leaves. I'm not gonna be able to fix these burnt leaves, but I could help the plant recover by uh, moving it to a less sunny location. Unlike with the etiolated plants, I don't need to gradually acclimate it. I can immediately move it into a better environment where it's not getting scorched. 
Additionally, I often find that that is a time when it's good to give your succulent a deep drenching of water because often sun issues are in conjunction with high heat and drought. So your plant is often also a little bit thirsty. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. If there's anything I missed or if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments or over at mountaincrestgardens.com contact.